Hello, hello. Hey, 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 microphone's on. The people are here. We are at the Regent today in Los Angeles, California, starting off the first panel of Circle V. Yeah. I'm so excited to do this in my own hometown because I used to travel and tour and talk at all the festivals, the vegetarian festivals, and there's something about Los Angeles that's extra sexy. It's extra cool. I just wanted to sit amongst all of you people tonight, today. It's daytime still, right? I only had three hours of sleep, so um, it could be yesterday if you told me. Welcome to the Vegan Athlete Panel. I am Tanya Kay. Uh, I am your host and moderator for this evening. We have some amazing vegan athletes representing up here. They're all representing different sports. They have different lifestyles. We're gonna talk to them. We're gonna find out about them. I myself have been a professional dancer. Professional. I make my fucking money doing this. Thank you. For 26 years, we get to be young forever. And I've been vegan for 24 years. Oh. Yeah. Vegetarian longer than that, but I'm not telling you how long. <laughs> so you cannot find out. But let's go down the line. Let's find out who these people are, what their sport is, how long they've been doing their sport, and how long they've been vegan. Let's start with you. Um, so I'm John Lewis, AKA Badass Vegan. Uh, <laughs> that is not a self-proclaimed name as many people think. I was actually given that name and it just stuck. So um, I'm actually, uh, my sport is, I grew up playing basketball, played college ball, semi-pro ball. Um, I realized the semi-pro version was kind of like bull. So I got out of it, went back to grad school. Uh, did a little thing called uh, P90X, and that kind of gave me like my my platform to show people that you could be vegan and in shape. Because they used me in all the ads and the commercials, so when people found out I was vegan, they kind of were like, wait, you can be vegan and be in shape? And then somebody was like, man, you're one badass vegan. And I was like, I like that. He's a that. fitness model too, yeah. people. Yeah, uh, you know, I do, yeah. I'm like one of the tallest models out there. Cause, How you know, tall are you? 6'6", uh, six, six. so yeah. So, um, and I've been, I've been vegan now, it'll be 12 years in January, so I'm excited about that. And um, that's about it, got a lot of projects, but I know we don't have a lot of time, and I talk a lot, so I'm gonna pass it down right now. Well done, well done. <laughs> uh, my name's Kenny Anderson, and uh, I'm a professional skateboarder. Woo! Yeah. Kenny Anderson, that's a good name. Uh, professional skateboarder, and um, yeah, I've been vegan for about, probably, Strictly about four years veggie before for about seven to eight. Um, yeah, that's the initial question, right? <laughs> Boom. You, uh, Kenny, have you been skateboarding longer than uh, you've been vegan? Yeah, I've been skateboarding for 30 years. Okay. Uh, pro, pro for since 1998. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, we have a question for you after okay. this. Yeah. My name is Alexandra Paul. Oh. And <laughs> I, um, I'm mostly known as a triathlete, but I actually have had knee surgery, so now I'm a long distance swimmer. And I've been vegan for seven and a half years, vegetarian for 33 before that. It's one of my biggest regrets is taking so long to go vegan. Well, you got a transition. So it's a nice long transition. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's too nice. <laughs> yeah, um, my name's Dotsie Bausch, and uh, thank you. One, no, I'm kidding. Um, my sport was uh, track cycling. Does anyone know what that is? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's this. <laughs> really, really fast in circles. Um, but I retired uh, in 2012 after the London Olympics where um, Team USA won a silver medal in our event. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I've been vegan for six years. My name is Brian Turner. Uh, I've been vegan the least amount of time out of on the panel. Um, I've been bodybuilding for 10 years and then around my seven and a half year, I had really, really bad acne because I was just putting about a gallon of milk into my body a day. There's a, a special diet called the Go Mad Diet. Gallon of milk every single day. Really? That exists? It still right? exists. <laughs> it's really popular among like young, young dudes trying to get really big. So you gotta get a lot of calories in. It's a quick way to get calories in. 
But then I ended up really causing my own cystic acne, and so I looked into uh, veganism after I ended Accutane, and my acne was starting to come back. So I took out meat, took out the dairy, and I was starting to see my face get better, and I started adding in vegetables, and my face got even better. And then from there, I started looking into the ethical side of it instead of just the visual side of it. And from there, it's just like, I was sold on it. The health for yourself is better. The ethics of actually not causing harm is amazing. And it just opens you up to like really positive people. I feel like most of the vegan people I run into have a really positive energy. Whereas people who are more focused on just the muscle and being a bodybuilder and being like revered and stuff have a little bit of a colder energy. So I've just loved being a part of the vegan movement since, since I've gone into it. And uh, oh, I'm a YouTuber. That's what I do. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. We all love being part of the vegan movement. Thank you. How many years did you say? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half? Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the family. Never going away from it. <laughs> okay, so um, everybody kind of, uh, not everybody, but a few of the athletes mentioned eating fresh foods, putting more vegetables into their body. I just wanted to mention that that's a big thing for me. Um, I've been high raw for the last 15 years, and thank you. And that made a huge difference in my performance as an athlete. It really cleaned me up. And so the difference between being a non-vegan athlete and being a vegan athlete, some of us can't remember because it was a long time ago, but uh, I do remember going high raw and how that cleaned me up was I got in touch with my body so I could feel like what I was doing was harming it in my movement earlier. So that prevents injury. But I still had a major injury last year, couldn't walk for four months, and that's big for a dancer, every type of big. And I didn't take a single chemical pill during all that time, no anti-inflammatories, no painkillers, and they prescribed them to me. So that's pretty cool about being a vegan is that while I'm injured and healing, I'm not also compounding that with chemicals and things that are making me sicker on the side. And then finally, um, my spirit is so much more beautiful when it's clean, and for a dancer, you can see that on stage. You can really see my spirit come through my art form. So please tell us, everyone, each going down, let's start at that end. Um, Brian, can you tell us how going vegan affected your performance as an athlete? Um, so like I was mentioning, I was doing a lot of dairy up to that point in my bodybuilding. And the one thing that I hadn't noticed was happening, but when I switched over to being vegan, I really noticed the difference was, I was really inflamed all the time. I felt like my body was just waterlogged. I felt like I was holding like an extra 10 pounds of water. I would always have like really like bloated jowls and everything just felt like my skin was tight. But it wasn't fat because it could go away if I wouldn't, you know, violate all the dairy and all that stuff. Um, and then mucus, like huge difference. When I would wake up in the morning when I was bulking, because when, when I was trying to gain my biggest amount of weight, I was eating five to 6,000 calories a day. That's a lot of food, especially when you're doing it from like dairy and protein bars and mass gainers and stuff. So I'd wake up and it would be really hard to wake up. My eyes would be like super crusty. Uh, my mouth was thick. I felt like I could never be hydrated enough. I was super like inflamed and puffy and stuff. You make it sound so sexy. <laughs> yeah. It's a sexy lifestyle, man. Uh, and, and, and you know, like bodybuilders, a, a lot of people, a, not now it's a little different, but a lot of people used to think like that's the epitome of health because you're like ripped and low body fat and all that kind of stuff. But really I was like living the most unhealthy way and I was like double, triple dosing the, the stuff that I was putting into my body. So when I changed that up, as well as my acne improving and stuff, my strength went up, my energy went up. I was able to wake up and be ready so I could start going to the gym earlier instead of having to wait until I was kind of clearing out that whole like gunk in the morning. Uh, and just overall, in general, I was able to hold a lot less water, which for me is important. I know it's not for everybody, but for me it's really important because being on camera every day, people are judging your body and stuff like that. And if you're always dealing with all these weird inflammations and dairy problems and stuff like that, it's not the, the look that you're trying to show people, you know, trying to get people into exercising and improving their life, but they're watching you and it looks like your life is getting worse as you're going on. So that was really exciting and that's been like the biggest thing for me is, is all those changes. Yeah, it's definitely a visual sport, yours is. Definitely. Yeah, so that helps a lot. Thank you so much. Um, so for me, uh, my, I did the, my journey to the Olympics, I was, um, 
oh, 10, 15 years older than most other people's journeys to the Olympics. So when I stood on the Olympic podium, I was just like five months shy of my 40th birthday. So coming into it, my teammates are all younger. All, our, all the competitors were 10, 15, 20 years younger than I was. So I was really kind of facing uh, a recovery repair issue. And I went plant-based 100% because of the cruelty. I was exposed to it and I was, I was kind of one of those overnight like, oh, okay, duh, and they'll tell more people about this and everybody will be vegan like tomorrow that I know anyway. Didn't happen that way, but. Uh, so then I did it and really shortly after, unbelievable short amount of time, I started repairing and recovering in literally half the time than my teammates who were all so much younger. And I mean, it got, it got kind of weird where they were like, you know, it's cycling. So they're like, what, what are you taking? And I was like, it's plants. And it was, it was shocking to, you know, me. I didn't know that, I wasn't expecting that transformation. But so for me, repair and recovery just sped up like that. Amazing. It, it took decades off your life. I mean, not off, it added. It made you young, like younger than her athletic counterparts. That's amazing. All right. <laughs> so because I'd been vegetarian so long, and I'd actually given up a lot of dairy, but I still had a little bit in, so that's why I don't call myself a vegan, except for starting from seven and a half years ago. For me, it was mental, like a lot of physical activities are mental, is that aligning my diet with my values made me feel better about myself and what I was doing and more confident. And that improved my whole outlook, not just in my sports, but in life. And my whole heart just opened. Just, I looked at the world completely differently and at competition differently. differently. And I also had a mission because you feel like you represent vegans and all the, you want to combat all the myths that vegans are weaklings and that they don't eat enough protein, which I hope, John, you'll talk about the protein thing. <laughs> so anyway. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, um, what you just said is, is key for me too, the, the mental part of it. Um, because when you, it's, it's, it's a sort of, it's a form of connect, like when you connect with yourself so much on a, in a, uh, prioritizing your health. And not only for the environment, for the animals and all that, but it all, when you make that connection, um, for me, skateboarding is, it's so, it's so mental. When you're, when you're going up to a, a, a handrail or stairs or what, 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 uh, whatever we skate, you, you have to be mentally prepared. And that clarity, like I, I saw that within like three to four months of this clarity. Um, not only connecting like mentally, like I said, but to be able to overcome that. And then obviously physically that's gonna follow. Um, and what Dati said too is about, I, 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 I mean, I've spent 30 years skateboarding, 1998, turned pro. Uh, I get hurt every single day. I fall every day. Um, so it is about uh, healing and being preventative, one. And um, just a quick story, I've, I went to three doctors. They said I needed reconstructive surgery or stop skating. And that was about two years ago. I had uh, shredded tendons in my ankle and about eight tears here. And it was basically dangling off. And I was, I was like... There's no way, if, if my ankle's over there, then I would get surgery, but it's connected. So I'm like, <laughs> that's just me Feel too. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going. But what I did was look into a natural doctor and I was already vegan at the time, but really, really started focusing on um, that connection too, on healing. And we heal on a cellular level. So when, I, when it came down to a natural procedure, mixed with diet, mixed with breathing, meditation, and all that's connected, I was able to heal myself and I hadn't felt that, that good in like six, seven years. Um, and people said, you need surgery. Yeah, at three, I mean, three sports doctors that deal with athletes saying reconstructive surgery or stop skating. Those are my options. Don't you feel like, hey, you guys should take lessons from me. Well, you want to know how to heal people? Look at me. I did have a 45-minute conversation with one doctor after my appointment. They were asking me about my blood work and how it was good. And that was a great conversation. Well done, well done. <laughs> All right. Damn, I gotta go after that. Uh, <laughs> shit. So for me, it was, it was um, I guess I'll, I'll go currently now. Like I played basketball, semi-pro, and uh, recently in the last six months, I've taken on CrossFit, which has been like a big challenge for me. 
but I'm very competitive. And while like I'm still learning, I'm always trying to be first. And it's so funny because like we all talked about recovery. Literally, my recovery is out of this world. And so there's a bunch of younger people in the class. And so one day they were like, well, the only reason why you beat us is because you're so younger than us. And I'm like, no, I'm 40. And they're like, wait, what? They're like, no, they're like, they're literally looking at me like, wait, what? I'm like, no, I'm really, I'm really 40. Like, and they're like, so they're literally like, damn, we need to go vegan. I'm like, like literally, I got this, I got a whole class of 16 people like every day asking me questions every day. And they're like, but where do you get your protein? And I'm like, oh man. So like, and then, and then, all right, shamelessly, I do own a protein shake company. So it's, but, but I'm probably one of the few owners we talked about in the back. I'm one of the few owners that'll tell you, you don't need protein shakes. I own protein shakes, but I love the taste and the convenience of the protein shakes. You get protein from everything that you eat. But so I always tell them like, look, yes, please support me by the shake. That is amazing. <laughs> Do you actually need it on a day-to-day? -day? No, if you're, eat, if you're at home and you're getting your food, you can get the nutrients that you need. And for me, I've noticed that the more alkaline I look at my food, the better and better I feel. Like, I mean, I've, I've honestly had two knee surgeries. I got a titanium plate in my wrist. I probably hit my head so many times I shouldn't be talking. But, you know, it's amazing the clarity that does come with it. Like, I, I used to be very angry. Like, we talked about, like, and I'm talking about it in my documentary coming up, is I grew up in Ferguson, Missouri. If you weren't an angry person, you wouldn't make it. And, like, now I'm very, very calm to the point to where I still might want to do something bad, but <laughs> I have Watch that moment of, of conversation with myself first, and I'm like, okay, you can't do that, John. So I would say clarity and recovery is just... Just amazing, which I guess is synonymous across the board for years. <laughs> and everybody brought up that we're kind of like breaking the rules. It makes me think that when they study, when doctors study aging and degenerative diseases and whatnot, they're studying sick people, people that are sick already. Because look up here. This is a different lifestyle. This is a different option. They're not studying us. This is what 40 looks like. This is normal. That, this is normal. This, all of us, we're adults. <laughs> Somebody's really going to think I'm on steroids now after that. <laughs> okay, uh, that, that brings up a good, a good point. You said, you know, interacting with people, and you've kind of calmed down, but still today, do you ever um, relate to others, specifically in your sport, for this panel, specifically in your sport, who are like doing it wrong? Do you want to tell them what to do? How do you approach other people? What's your approach? My, my approach is lead by example. Like I, I'm not one of those people that's like, and, I, and I, before I say this, I think we need every facet of veganism. We need the people out there that are posting the videos. We need the people at the vigils. We need the people handing out pamphlets. We need the athletes. I'm one of the people that's out there. I, I call it the Trojan horse tactic. Like, I come in looking like them. I'm an athlete, I wanna do all that. And then when they make that statement like, oh man, like, what's going on? Like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm vegan. I let them come to me first. But once they open the gate, I let them know everything about veganism. And, I, and I've noticed that they're more receptive for me than doing that. Now, I still wear my shirts, my No Way Jose. I'll wear my, this is what a badass vegan looks like. And you'll see people, cause there's classes after us. And people will wait, I've had people literally send me a message on Instagram like, hey, what time is your class at the gym? I'm coming. And I'm like, hey, I go at six in the morning. I've had four people show up at six in the morning. They usually come at night just to talk to me about it. So my, my tactic is be as friendly and open as possible. And then once they come inside, you lock the door and you tell them everything. <laughs> but like... <laughs> nice, nice. How about you, Kenny? No, I agree. That's, ex that's exactly what I do. Um, in a uh, skateboarding is weird because there's kids at skateboard that are like three now. Uh, obviously they're not they're 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 DMing me too. But so you have the age group from three to like 50, and um, what I do it, I do I lead by example. I'm I'm 40 as well, and it's like it's when you're watching a skateboarder skate with so much energy. Um, not that I don't I don't need to talk about myself. I don't I don't think we need to define ourselves with words, but um, that questions start coming. Whether, and on a ground level, every tour I go on, I end up, someone talks to me about some post I did or a story or, and then that leads into, like you said, once that gate op gate's open, I'm like, 
<laughs> and I'll stop skating for like two hours because it's shifting thought right now, yeah. you know? Um, really cool. And with the, and uh, that's, you know, on a, on, a, on a ground level, but then the DMs that you get, it's, it's interesting how many, uh, how, how inspiring that is for me. Like if I just post one thing and then like 20 DMs coming about asking about spirulina, something I just posted, and then I'm like, oh, it's kind of inspiring to post more. Yeah. Um, and the fact that it's not just a bunch of adults, like older people, I just need to be young, Kenny. No, it's like kids who actually care. And the fact that that's happening naturally for me, I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, studying more and to, to be able to answer those questions like nice. very deeply, you know. Not, from personal, I always, I always uh, answer from personal experience, not just regurgitating information I've learned, but um, like I said, when you lead by example like that, and if I, I'm bleeding that stuff, so it's very easy to talk about. Thank you. I try and get in the interviews that I do. I'm not very good about telling people what to do. And because I'm an ethical vegan, I prefer to come from it from the ethical side. But a lot of times, as a woman, you probably know, who's maintained my weight, and I'm 54, um, that's the big question. How do you maintain your weight? And I'm always a little bit like, do I tell them it's because I'm vegan? Because people who go vegan just to maintain their weight are less likely to keep it, you know, stay vegan. It's sort of like a fad diet. But at the same time, I do appreciate, I do want them to try it at least and be open to it and know the benefits of it. I don't talk about it a lot uh, in my personal life, but I try, like y'all, I try and just be and then uh, hopefully attract people who want what I have, if I could use a 12-step. <laughs> um, I know your outreach, you have a X milk campaign going on, so uh, how do you approach mm. other athletes with the vegan well, message? Yeah, well, yeah, we can definitely talk about that too, for sure, but um, for me, I really feel like the most effective form of my activism has been really celebrating people wherever they are on their journey, which is hard, right, because, you, you know, someone talks to you and they're like, okay, all right, I'm ready, or a lot of times they're like, okay, that's it. Like, they've seen so many posts that they're like, okay, that's it, I'm enough. And we're gonna go vegetarian. And all of us are like, oh, really, that's sweet. Well, you know, <laughs> hello. Or the, the most favorite, like, I'm, I'm almost there, I'm just eating fish. And you're like, fuck, fish feel! <laughs> you wanna freak out. Poor fish. How do you But respond? it's celebrating them along that process. Because I haven't found anyone to go there if you're angry and pissed and berating them and like you should know better and what are you doing? I, I, we feel like we want to do that, but it just doesn't work. So it's just celebrating and encourage them every step. And they seem to, to kind of step a little faster the more encouragement you give them. Yeah, it's totally right. psychological. When you give someone like a little reward, they want to do it again so they get a bigger reward, which is you, you know, saying, good job, that's awesome that you took out just the meat for this week. Yeah. You know, because like so many vegans are so far past starting that they forget what starting meant to them. Because, I mean, anything you do, trying to go 100% by tomorrow, the adherence rate to that's going to be super low. So like if, you, if someone can do a small step, you should be like, yes, that's awesome, that's awesome. What's next, dude, what's next? But not, not berate them or tell them that, that it's not enough or, or start talking about the other ethics or the other things they haven't taken out yet. You should give them that, that, that quick you know, applause for them so they can feel really good about it. Um, yeah, it's always harder to convince somebody of something that you are telling them that they're wrong at and, you're, and putting them on the defensive because then you have to fight past their defenses, then you have to convince them. And people always want to be right. Their ego is huge, right? So if you attack their ego, then you got to fight the ego, then you go to logic. Thank and that you. doesn't work. Thank right. you. Right, so, so we're going we're gonna to wrap this up here. Okay. I want to know personally, like in one or two sentences, what your activism is focused on right now. For me, I um, am supporting um, all the wild horses. Does anybody know about this? The wild horse campaign where the Bureau of Land Management is systematically driving wild horses into extinction on our tax money right now to appease livestock ranchers. So that, find out about it. That's what I'm activism about right now. Yep. That's awesome. 
Um, so for me, I have a YouTube channel. We just got to like 215,000 subscribers, which is freaking crazy, because a year ago we were just barely, maybe even on course to go for 100. So what I cover a lot is fitness, the, the food stuff, so I do full day eatings to show people what they can eat, especially people who are newer to it, because it's really complicated when you get in the big recipes. So I make it simple for bros like me to be able to go vegan. You know, you make a quick three-step meal instead of like a 20-ingredient thing. But then I also, my biggest claim to fame, the reason I have all the subscribers is, is showing my acne throughout the, the process of getting rid of it and showing the, the cysts and stuff. I used to have six, seven cysts on my face every single day. My whole face was covered in black eyes. You could squeeze 30 of them out at once just by pressing on my face, seriously. So people watch me for that and then they say, what did you do? What can I do? What's my first step to even trying to clear my own acne up? without going into medications. And so I can tell them, start getting those vegetables in there, take the dairy out, and if that starts working, then start looking at other things. Start taking all the milk powders out, start taking all the, nice. the whey powders, meats and stuff, and that eventually will get them because if they start seeing that acne go away, they go all the way with it. Thank you. Yeah, that's really cool. Sorry I'm moving so quick. She's flashing me signs that that's say okay. we have two minutes. Okay, I'll try to be. Try to be quick, 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 quick. Um, my biggest uh, kind of campaign right now, I have a, um, a nonprofit called Compassion Champs, and it's helping athletes change the relationship that they have with their food. And we have an X milk campaign. And um, it is to, I was just looking through an Ironman magazine one day, and the ad came up that with an athlete that it said, my after, and it was a big glass of chocolate milk, meaning her after her recovery. And I instantly thought, what about their after? What about the calves after? What about the mothers after? And I thought, oh, if they know, again, naive, if they know about this, if these athletes know about this, then they'll all change. And so I realized I had to tell them, like no one else was telling them. And so we did a, a letter campaign over four months. Uh, Kenny signed the letter, John signed the letter, Rich Roll signed the letter, Brendan Brazier, and, um, I'm excited to announce that two athletes, an Olympic gold medalist and an Ironman champion, are ditching dairy and in 2018 going with a plant-based sponsor. And I'm allowed to announce their, their, you know, announce their name in January because they're still under their milk contracts. But anyway, that's kind of the, well the biggest done. thing. Well done. You're going to change the world. Alexandra. Um, I'm involved with Open Rescue now with farm animals, and I just want to give a shout out to MFA for all the work that they do for farm animals. Woo! And if you haven't read Nathan's book, it's awesome, really. I highly recommend it. Thank you. I think quickly, uh, like I was saying, just uh, giving, uh, speaking from experience and talking to the kids, and uh, through my world of skateboarding too, I came out with this line, I ride for Converse Shoes, which is a huge shoe company, obviously. Uh, it's pretty big. And I did a, I, I did a line of, of vegan shoes for him. And um, I think that... Wow, cool. I, I, think, I, I think that, yeah, animal glue from everything. I'm very strict with that stuff. But it's uh, the fact that it's, uh, teenage kids that are, if they're looking at me in any way, it's going to be that there's an, op an optional way to think and an uh, optional product. And even if they don't act on it right now, it'll always be in their head, so. Yes. John? All right. Um, so my, my biggest thing right now is I'm, I'm focused on uh, people in the community who feel that they can't afford good food, good vegan food. Uh, if anybody here has seen What the Health or Cowspiracy, um, I, I've announced it before, but I'm announcing that the next film is going to be my film. I'm working with Keegan um, to do, we're going to focus on food injustice as well as uh, food deserts uh, through the lens of hip hop. We got Russell Simmons to be the executive producer. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we're basically gonna just, if we, the name of it was gonna be Hip Hopocrates, but the thing is, Hippocrates is only really known within the vegan community, so we basically changed it to, they're gonna kill us. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we're just gonna let them know. Like, like, and, but because we realize that people change once they get mad at somebody. It takes, they can be in a, a messed up relationship forever, until they really get mad at the person, they're out. So that's it. They're trying to kill us. That's it. We love you. <laughs> oh, we got the end sign. We came in right on time. Thank you so much. That was your first panel at Circle V. There's a ton more amazing vegans that are going to be on the stage talking, so stick around. Yeah. Thank you so much.